what we're going to do today is continue our discussion of accounting and financial statements. And what we're going to do is focus in this part two section on some of the details of accounting and, um, and how that might, uh, how, they, how we think about accounting and why it's important. Um, before we dive too deeply into it, uh, and I'll, I'll over, give you an overview, then we'll talk about the income statement and all of that um, in a bit of detail. But a few uh, thoughts here. Uh, first of all, what the intent of this discussion is, is to give you a sense of what accounting is like, how it works, and why it's important, um, so that the numbers that you see when you see accounting results they at least make sense and that there's a logic to it. It's not a mystery. Um, this is not an accounting class, so we don't go into the details of how actually to do this, but I'll do my best to explain what, what the bookkeeper's doing, what the accountant's doing, how analysis occurs, um, so that the mystery is taken away. And also, because I've tried to make the point that accounting is such an important element of making sure that business runs smoothly because it provides a common set of facts that people can deal with as they make decisions, as they discuss possible opportunities going forward, um, as they decide whether or not to put money at risk, there's a common um, information set that people can use. And the errors, because of tradition and the way double bookkeeping works, the errors in that are minimized. So the people trust that what they're, that the information that they have for decision making and action, that that, that is, um, is something that, that they have the same information as other people. And there's not this asymmetry problem where somebody knows something about the situation and someone else doesn't, which necessarily, because of that uncertainty, uh, drives the potential for a high value or a best value deal down, like the lemon problem with the used car um, that we've talked about. So that's what we're going to do this morning. One other caveat is that um, I am not an, a, a CPA, so in some of the details, what I tell you might not be exactly right. So if you're accountant, I'm not saying they're not going to be right, but I'm saying if your accounting professor tells you something different, then that, that's, that is the correct accounting, what they say. I'm giving you the perspective of how to look at financial statements and interpret them from a business perspective, okay? Um, the last thing I'll say as an introduction here is that this is, go, is recorded so that you can go and upload or go and look at the videos later if there's any questions that come up as you're preparing for, um, for exams or as you're trying to Maybe you run into some accounting later on and you want to have a, a kind of refresher on how accounts work and journals and all of that sort of thing. So this is going to be a bit tedious for some of you that aren't, um, that don't have that sense of wanting to understand accounting. Um, but hopefully you can go through it and it'll give you a sense as to why all these numbers you see aren't mysterious and how they got there. And that's what we're going to be uh, focusing on. So the first piece that I'm going to do is describe the overview of a set of financial statements, which we can see here, and I'll make bigger so we all can, can take a look at it. Um, this is not financial statements, I should say. This is a, um, a ledger and how people are entering information into accounting. Not surprising, right? The cash, you can see it's double entry, bookkeeping. That is, there's two entries on every row. There's a cash entry, there's $250,000, or excuse me, $2,500 in the cash account. And if you look all the way over, let me see if I can turn on my little arrow here. That's the $2,500 here in the cash account, and that was put in as an equity investment by the owner. So the $2,500 is here, and it shows up as cash. They also wanted to get started, so they got a loan from the Small Business Association of $5,000. Since that's a loan, you can see that it shows up here as a liability. And they bought some things, so they took $3,000 out, out of the cash account, and from that cash, they bought this equipment right here. That's a $3,000. They also needed some inventory to get themselves started, 
That's the $2,000 here where they bought some flowers and vases and things like that. Um, I think this is a flower shop was the idea. Um, and that way, that $2,000 goes into inventory. Um, and so that was, they actually got the roses for inventory. Um, and they, they the roses they got right here were given to them by a supplier of roses over here, but they don't have to pay that yet. It's a, like I was saying, there's a trade, there's a trade um, credit here where the roses, rose the grower brings them in and until they pay for them, they have like 30 days or whatever to pay for the roses. They get an invoice for $325. That is debt to the suppliers here. And then the first month of sales, cash comes in the door, but the inventory leaves because now those roses and the other materials that they had had here um, leave uh, leave the business here. At least uh, $1,500 of it goes to the cost of goods sold. And the other 500 over here, you can see, goes to equity because that is the retained earnings. So they made a bit of a profit here, $500, based upon this sale here. And $150 or $1,500 was relieved from inventory. So now the inventory account would have, have $1,500 less than it would have had before as you go forward. That is, it would have 825. So you can see all along this equation, the fundamental equa equation of accounting is matched. $8,325 is in the cash account, and that's equal to $5,325 of liabilities and $3,000 of equity. Assets are equal to liabilities. That way, with the separation of duties, as I said, you have someone who's managing the money, probably the owner, and you have people in the back managing the inventory accounts and all of that, different people doing different things. Everybody can be comfortable that what's going on in that business is transparent to other people as they um, move forward in, in working through the business. That's just an idea of how one would do your bookkeeping. Um, with respect to getting the uh, the business up and running and a day-to-day -day operation and that sort of thing. the um, This happens, of course, because you're processing paperwork and other sorts of things, and that's called the accounting cycle. How do you get all of this information into your accounts so that you know how much inventory you have and how much, pred uh, how much credit you owe and all those things? It's the accounting cycle. And that's this four-step procedure, which we'll talk about here, where you examine source documents, you record transactions, um, you do the journal accounting, which we were showing before, and you post the transactions, and then you prepare your financial statements. It's the, um, it's the idea of just basically keeping track of all the activities that you do. You can see here as an example, make this bigger as well, we have uh, somebody is coming in and buying flowers these are this is uh, 750 dollars for a wedding there's um uh, the, the actual receipt is five thousand dollars for the flowers plus twenty five hundred dollars for some sort of consulting service that gets entered here into this uh, this journal account as the wedding for brown's wedding there is a cash increase as you can see of 750 dollars right you're just keeping track like the other a form on the other page. Let's see here. <clears throat> the second thing that you do is you enter that particular transaction that you identified into your uh, transaction, your general ledger, and you can see again the brown wedding. Let me move this thing over. The brown wedding here, the seven hundred fifty dollars that you have um, that you have received, and that's part of your balance. So you can see how you're keeping track in your ledger of how all of these different uh, pieces fit together. And then the next thing you do is you build your financial statements. And here you see the income statement, which I'll describe in a little bit, the balance sheet. And then in this uh, last one, you have what your budget looks like. So here, let me just quickly go through these. We're going to talk a little bit more about each of the um, financial line items in, in more detail in a moment, but we have revenues is how much money comes in from customers. In this case, we know from this flower shop that we have flowers being sold. 
$123,000 worth of flowers in a year. Plus they do some consulting services where they're paid to come out and look and, and suggest some flower arrangements and the like. So in total, this business makes $197,700 coming in from customers. Of course, they have to buy their flowers, the selling expenses that they have in terms of their uh, marketing and sales and advertising. They have to pay their accountant, of course, and other people in the operation. They have to pay for their lease costs and the like. Maybe they have some copying that they have to do or whatever, um, transaction costs, bank fees. So their total expenses is 134000 That means their net income is 63000 This is keeping track of what happened in the year from January the 1st, 2011, in this example, to December 31st, 2011. Importantly, in accounting, the income statement is a period of time. It doesn't care what happened before, and it doesn't care what happened after. All it is is this is all of the activity that occurred during the period where the income statement represents. In this case, it's for the annual, for the year of 2011. It's a period view, what happened during this period. The balance sheet, however, is a good as a complement to that. There's a balance sheet that exists as of January the 1st or December 31st, 2010. As you can see, this is 2011. So before this period here on the income statement, there was a balance sheet. But we really care now about what is in the balance sheet, that is, the balances of all your accounts, how much money you have, how much you owe, how many, uh, what assets you have, what your equity is, that is, how much value you've created or you own in the business. Um, you have all of those as of as of the date 2011. So this is a snapshot of what's owned and what's known. Cash, $17,000. You have you uh, accounts receivable means people owe you an additional $10,000. Um, you also have inventory of $8,750, vases and the like in this case. Um, so your total assets that you own that are short-term, current, that is they're they turn over relatively quickly. You, you have on in stock at that particular point in time, $36,800 worth of these current assets, meaning over the course of the year, you'll use them. The next year, you'll use them. But in addition, you've bought equipment, which lasts multiple years. You have an office building that you bought. You have these total amount of assets that last multiple years, which are called property and equipment, or PP&E, generally property, plant, and equipment, they call it. And so your total assets are $121,700. So what we should know is that is going to be the total of all of the liabilities and equities. So you look down and see what you owe other people. You can see you owe your suppliers. Remember the rose dealers bring the roses in. Other flowers come in also from other people that they, you may not have to pay them until a later date. They give you an invoice. So they are essentially loaning you money. That's twelve thousand six hundred dollars. So that's right here. You also have to pay your long term. You have long term liabilities of twenty three thousand six hundred. So you're um, you have a mortgage of twenty three thousand six hundred. So your total uh, liabilities are thirty six thousand two hundred dollars. So what that means is that the owner has put into this business through their cash that they put in and through the profits that they own, that they get, but they keep in the business, uh, $85,500. So the total, of course, matches. This is the capital that is the called the shareholder value or the, the owner's capital, owner's equity of this business. It's also the net, net worth of the company, net value. Okay, so that's how, that's how this process works. In this last one, you can see they look at and forecast the sales they're going to have every month, <clears throat> consulting they're going to have, so the total revenue they're going to have or that they have every month for 2011. And you can see that over here. So they can use this to then see, figure out what the next year is likely to look like for them. Okay, so that's that's a um, a an overview of what an income statement and balance sheet look like and how it relates to this accounting process. What you're doing is you're trying to figure out how you're doing and you're trying to capture all the transaction information into a set of books 
and a set of financial statements that tell you what happened over the last several months. And in addition, it tells you what your company or business looks like from a snapshot perspective. Okay. Before we go into a little more detail on here, are there any questions about that? No questions? Okay. So now let's talk about 